ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا سيئات من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وكشف الله به الغمه فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا ان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم شر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله ثم اما بعد we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to witness another Jum'ah on this blessed day of Jum'ah. We thank Him for all His favors and blessings upon us. In times of extreme difficulty and uh, desperation, people will resort to many different things. It's a very difficult situation. People, to get out of that difficult situation, they will resort to many different things, some things that they normally wouldn't do. And there's no more difficult situation or desperate situation than the situation on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, where it's either you're on with Ashab Al-Yameen on the right, with the people of paradise, or you're with Ashab Al-Shimal, the people of the left, into the hellfire. There's no, de- there's no more desperate situation than that, when the stakes are extremely high, the highest, that they can ever be. And so you can imagine that the person who is destined, who has been ruled, or uh, has been given the the, the, uh, ruling of going to the fire, who has been destined to the fire, you can imagine what the desperation that they will have to not enter it, or once they enter it, to leave from it. This is the fire, uh, we know the descriptions of the hellfire, 70 times hotter than the normal fire of this world, and many other descriptions that come in the Quran and the Sunnah. So we can imagine the desperation of people who are destined for the fire, and how they will try to wiggle their way out so that they won't have to enter it and not be punished inside the fire. And losing on the Day of Judgment is not like losing in this life. Losing in the Day of Judgment, this is the true loss, as Allah Azza says, قُلْ إِنَّ الْخَاسِرِينَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَهْلِهِمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَلَا ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ Say, the true losers are those who lose themselves and they lose their families on the Day of Judgment. And that is the true loss. So the desperation will be intense on the Day of Judgment. And so people are going to resort to many different things to try to get out of that punishment. One of the things that a person will do is that they will be willing to sacrifice everyone and anyone to save themselves from the punishment. Imagine a mother being willing to sacrifice her children so that she can be saved and willing to put her children into the fire or into the punishment for her to be saved. Or a father or a husband or a wife willing to sacrifice their beloved family members. But this is the situation on the Day of Judgment the mujrim, the criminal, on that day, he is going to be willing to sacrifice for him the ransom himself in place uh, for his children. He will be willing to sacrifice himself and ransom himself by his children, and his wife and his siblings, and his tribe that covers him and protects him. Everyone on earth will be willing to ransom so that he can be saved. So this is the level of desperation 
that a person, the most beloved people, we cannot imagine this in this world, in this life. We cannot imagine a normal human being, a normal human being, that a, a, a normal human beings, that a mother would ever be willing to sacrifice and ransom her children to save herself from punishment, or a father, or a, so, a son or a daughter for their parents. We can't imagine that in this world for a normal human being. But this will be the situation on the Day of Judgment. So this is one thing that the disbelievers will be willing to do. And not just the disbelievers, but anyone destined for the fire. They'll be willing to sacrifice and ransom themselves by their children and by their wives and by their siblings and by their fellow tribesmen and anyone on earth. Another act of desperation is that they will be willing to or they will be calling Allah, on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for total and utter destruction for themselves. They will wish that they don't exist anymore. They will call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they become nothing, non-existent. As Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّا عَذَابًا قَرِيبًا الْمَرْءُ مَا قَدَّمَتْ يَدَاهُ وَيَقُولُ الْكَافِرُ يَا لَيْتَنِي كُنْتُ تُرَابًا on that day when everyone will see what they put forth in term, terms of their deeds and the, the disbeliever يَقُولُ الْكَافِرُ the disbeliever will say on that day يَا لَيْتَنِي woe to me كُنْتُ تُرَابَ I wish that I was dust I wish that I was dust I wish that I am non-existent and then when they enter the fire they will be begging calling out to Malik the gatekeeper of the hellfire وَنَادَوْ يَا مَالِكُ لِيَقْضِي عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكُ they will call out to Malik and they will say to him, let our, let our Lord put an end to us. Get rid of us. Just make us non-existent. And it will be said to them, it will be said to them, قَالَ إِنَّكُمْ مَاكِثُونَ No, you're staying right here. Not going anywhere. لَقَدْ جِئْنَاكُمْ بِالْحَقِّ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَكُمْ لِحَقِّ كَارِهُونَ The truth came to you, but most of you are hateful of the truth. So this is another act of desperation, wishing that they are non-existent, wishing for total destruction. From the acts of desperation is that people will be begging for a second chance. When, the, when they are placed in front of the fire, When they are placed in front of the fire, they will say, They will say, Can we please go back? And when we go back, we will believe. And we will not be from those who, disp who denied. We will not be from those who denied Allah's signs. And we will be, will be from those who believe. So they will be willing to, or they will be begging to go back and have a second chance. But Allah says in the next verse, But if they were to go back, if Allah were to hypothetically send them back, they would return back to whatever they used to do before. It would not make any difference. From the acts of desperation on Yawm Al-Qiyamah is that people will then, when nothing else works, they will resort to lying and denying. And they will try to claim that, no, we, did, we didn't commit shirk, we didn't commit evil, we didn't do this, we didn't do that. As Allah says in the Quran, uh, they will say, They will swear in front of Allah, even though Allah knows everything. Allah knows everything they did. But they will, well, they will swear in desperation. And they will say, we didn't commit any shirk. We were not from the mushrikeen. In another verse, Allah says, مَا كُنَّا نَعْمَلُ مِنْ سُوءٍ They will say that we never used to do any evil. And they will insist on this. And they will lie. Even though the, the records are there in front of them. And everything is clear. But they will resort to lying. Because that's what you do in times of desperation. When you're about to face an intense punishment. A criminal, the first thing they're going to do is make up a story. And make up uh, a lie to get out of it. So they will be willing to lie in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they know that Allah knows the truth but they will be willing to lie to try to get out of the punishment. And uh, this lying of course will not benefit them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause their own body parts to testify against them. Allah will cause all their body parts to testify their tongues, their hands, their legs, everything will testify from their own body parts so that there's no room for anybody to even lie and deny after that once you have your own tongue testifying against you your own hands your own legs what can you say after that 
also from the acts of desperation is that people will start to look for others to blame. They will look for others to blame. And blaming is a very common human trait when things go wrong. When things go wrong, people tend to look for other people to blame. It happens, right, in business. There has a business uh, company, and you have partners, and the business fails. What, starts, what happens is that one partner starts to blame the other partner. You didn't do your part. You didn't do this properly. You didn't do this. I did all the work, and so on. So they start to blame each other. All right, we see this also in sports. If you follow sports, especially team sports, the team fails. They didn't make the playoffs, or uh, they lost when they shouldn't have lost. The blame starts to go around. This player didn't perform as he did in the regular season. His numbers are way down. All right, it happens also in criminal activity. A bunch of criminals come together. They commit a crime. They're caught. What happens? They start to blame each other. One will say that this is the ringleader. He, he was the one who organized everything. He planned everything. And I didn't know what was going on. So they will start to blame each other. And this is what we, what we, what we will see on the Day of Judgment, that people will start to look for others to blame. And there will be three main sources of blame or targets of blame on the Day of Judgment. Number one, the followers, the weak followers, they are going to blame the leaders. They're going to blame the leaders and the powerful and the influencers and the trendsetters. The followers will try to blame the leaders. And Allah mentions in a number of verses arguments that will go back and forth between the followers and those who are followed. And they will be arguing and each try to blame the other to try to get off. Allah says in the verse, وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذِ الظَّالِمُونَ مَوْقُفُونَ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يَرْجِعُ بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَىٰ بَعْضٍ الْقَوْلِ يَقُولُ الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا That the weak, the weak and the, those who are easily influenced and easily uh, swayed and gullible, they will say, يَقُولُ الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا لِلَّذِينَ اسْتَكْبَرُوا They will say to the, the proud and the arrogant and the leaders and the people in authority and positions of influence, لَوْلَا أَنْتُمْ لَكُنَّا مُؤْمِنُونَ they will say, if not for you, then we would have, been, we would have become be believers. We would have been believers. The leaders and the influencers and the people who have the authority and the sway, they won't accept this because they don't want any more on their scale of evil deeds on the Day of Judgment. So, of course, they're going to deny this and they're going to push back on these accusations. They will say, قَالَ الَّذِينَ اسْتَكْبَرُوا لِلَّذِينَ did we prevent you from the guidance? Did we forcibly prevent you from taking the guidance? Did we prevent you from guidance once it came to you? No, you guys were criminals. You're the one who chose this path. And then the followers will respond back again. This is going to be going back and forth, back and forth. And the weak and the followers, they will say to the, the leaders and the powerful and the strong, they will say that no, it was your planning and plotting day and night and encouraging us to do evil. This is why you are responsible. The lowly will say to the arrogant, no, it was your plotting by day and night when you ordered us to disbelieve in Allah and set up equals with him. And so this, this argument will go back and forth, back and forth, and they will each try to blame each other to get out of the punishment. Uh, in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, where the followers will be lamenting, we wish we didn't follow these people, these influencers and these other uh, people of authority and sway. They will say, we wish we followed Allah and His Messenger. And they will say, we followed our chiefs and our leaders, and they misled us. So the followers will blame those who were followed. And the followed, the leaders, they will distance themselves. When those who were followed, they will declare themselves free of those who follow. They will say, we had nothing to do, no, we have nothing to do with your misguidance. Do not blame us. We have nothing to do for, with your misguidance. So this is one type of blame that will 
occur on the day of judgment. The people, the followers, the weak, they will try to blame the powerful and prideful and strong. Another type of blame will be the blaming of the shaytan. As Allah has clearly told us in the Quran, in the shaytan alakum aduum mubi. The shaytan is a clear enemy to you. And we know that the shaytan whispers, Alladhi yuwaswi sufi sudurin nas. He's the one who whispers into the hearts of mankind and tries to mislead them. And he has made this promise until the day of judgment, Allah has given him respite until the day of judgment to carry out this mission of misleading the children of Adam. And so on the day of judgment, the criminals and the disbelievers and the people of sin and transgression, they will try to blame the shaitan and they try to pin the blame on him and make him responsible for their disobedience. But the shaitan himself will push back against that. And he will declare himself free, just like the, the leaders declare themselves free, the shaitan himself will also declare himself free from any type of blame. And the shaitan will say, وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعْدَ الْحَقِّ On the day of judgment, the shaitan will say that Allah made a promise, a promise of truth to you. وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ And I also made a promise to you, but I broke my promise. وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانِ And I did not have any power, any authority over you. وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعُوتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي The only thing I had was that I called you and you responded. I just made the call. But you are the ones who responded. فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ So do not blame me. I'm free of any type of blame. The shaitan will declare himself free. I have nothing to do with your misguidance. فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ But blame yourselves. Blame yourselves. You're the one responsible. مَا أَنَا بِمُسْرِخِكُمْ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُسْرِخِي That I cannot help you, I cannot save you, and you cannot save me. And so the shaitan will declare his, uh, his innocence from the sins and misguidance of mankind. And they will be left to themselves to bear that blame. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recounts uh, a... Uh, a, a conversation that will be going on between a person and his qareen. Every person has a sh uh, shaitan, a devil with him, called his qareen. And the person will be trying to blame this qareen on the day of judgment for misleading him. And his qareen will say, قَالَ قَرِينُهُ رَبَّنَا مَا أَضْغَيْتُهُ وَلَكِنْ كَانَ فِي ضَلَالٍ بَعِيدٍ His qareen, his, his devil that is with him, the companion, will say that I did not uh, mislead him. I didn't mislead him, but he was already in plain misguidance. He was already misguided. This was his situation already. I didn't do anything different. And so the devil and the shaitan will declare their innocence and their freedom from any type of blame on the day of judgment. When all else fails, another type of blame that will go around is, and this is the highest level of desperation, they will try to blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they will say that, Because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we committed shirk and we committed evil. Say, يَقُولُ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا لَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مَا أَشْرَكْنَا وَلَا آبَاؤُنَا وَلَا حَرَمْنَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ They will say that, if not for Allah, the politicists will argue, had it, not, had it been Allah's will, neither we nor our forefathers would have associated others with Him in worship and made anything unlawful. They will try to blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they will try to claim that, if not for Allah's will, then we would have never committed shirk, we would never commit acts of disobedience, and we would have never been in the situation that we are in today. And blaming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a common tactic of anyone who commits wrong and they're caught afterwards. This is what the shaitan did when he disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he was commanded to prostrate and he refused to prostrate and he was given his uh, promise of punishment. And he blamed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, because you, you Allah, you misled me and you caused me to do this, then now I'm going to mislead the children of Adam. So this was a tactic of shaitan to blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his own mis uh, disobedience. During the time of Umar radiallahu uh, anh, a thief was brought to him and he, ha he was about to, uh, the, 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 the punishment was about to be applied to him, which is cutting off the hand. And so this thief, he tried to Blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he tried to say that this was destined. That I only stole because this was written for me. 
to steal. So how are you going to cut off my hand if this was written, Allah decreed that I steal? So Umar radiallahu anhu gave a very intelligent answer and he said, if it was written and destined for you to steal, then it was also written destined for us to cut off your hand. And he cut off his hand and this criminal had no excuse. You cannot use, uh, blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for disobedience. So these are the types of blame that will go around on the Day of Judgment. People will try to blame the leaders and the influencers. They will try to blame the shaitan. They will even try to blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But none of these will have any effect. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give everyone their due reward or punishment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from the punishment of the hellfire. Ameen. قول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه صلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين on the Day of Judgment, there will be no excuses accepted. All the excuses that people will come with, none of that will be accepted. There's no excuses on the Day of Judgment. On that day, the excuses that those who committed wrong try to put forth it will not benefit them in any way. Allah says in another verse, Ya ayyuhalladheena kafaru la ta'tadiru al-yawm Oh, you have disbelieved, do not try to make any excuses on this day. You will be given your uh, reward or punishment based on what you have done. So there will be no excuses accepted on that day. A person will be enough of a test testified against himself. Will be enough of testimony against himself when his body parts start to speak against him. Even if a person brings all the excuses, none of that will be accepted. We will come alone on the Day of Judgment. No excuses will be accepted, no one to help. Everyone will come by themselves on the Day of Judgment. A person will say that we don't have any intercessors, we don't have any close friends, nothing to save you, only your deeds will be with you. And everyone will come on the day of judgment by themselves. Only with their deeds. Blame will not be accepted. The only person you can blame if you have anything evil is for yourself. And we will end with a very beautiful hadith. This is a hadith Qudsi in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at the beginning, Ya ibadi, inni haramtu dhulma ala nafsi Allah Azzawajal says, and this is a hadith Qudsi, the Prophet Sallallahu is narrating that Allah has said, O oh my servants, I have made oppression haram on myself and I've made it haram amongst you all. So do not oppress and do not commit wrong amongst yourselves. And it's a very long hadith and at the very end, at the very end, the Prophet Sallallahu narrates that Allah says, Ya ibadi, innama hiya a'malukum uhsiha lakum. Oh my servants, these are your deeds. And I am keeping account of these deeds for you. Innama hiya a'malukum uhsiha lakum. Thumma uwafikum iyaha. Then I will give you the, the dues of these deeds. If it's good deeds, then you will be rewarded. And if it's evil deeds, then you will be punished. Faman wajada khayran fal yahmadillah. Whoever finds good in his deeds, then he should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving him the ability to perform those, those good deeds. But whoever finds other than that, finds evil, then let him not blame anyone but himself. Don't blame anybody else. Don't blame the, the leaders and the influencers. Don't blame the shaitan. Do not blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you find your book of deeds is full of evil then do not blame anyone let him not blame anyone except for himself Thank you for 
كفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار اللهم رحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرض المسلمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد إن الله يأمركم العدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون قوموا إلى صلاتكم